Thanks, Erica. Uh, yeah, my name is Luke. I'm going to be talking to you today about uh, my image. I'm calling nucleotide pool understanding disruptions in cell division. So one of the primary goals of biology is to understand how cells function and how their functions are regulated. And one window into this is looking at the cell's genome. Uh, the genome is contained in each cell uh, inside the nucleus. And for humans, uh, the genome uh, contains about 3 billion base pairs of DNA. These are the A, G, T, C letters you think of when you think of DNA. Um, and these, these base pairs are organized into functional units called genes. And about 20,000 of these genes are what we call protein coding genes. And these genes provide specific instructions for making proteins. And proteins are the main workhorses for the major functions of cells. Uh, however, for many proteins, the full range of how they work inside cells is not re really well known. So when we're studying a process of interest, we often ask what proteins are involved. The process I'm gonna talk about today is mitosis. It's a basic process of cell biology of cells duplicating their genome and splitting into two subsequent cells. It's very really important for a lot, of different, um, a lot of different processes in biology and especially for um, some pathological conditions, including cancer, to, for cells to be able to regulate um, how they progress through mitosis. So one way to study the functions of genes and their protein products is by disrupting or perturbing genes of interest. Here I'm demonstrating that by turning part of the genome red. In modern biology, this is usually done using a CRISPR-Cas9 system. After perturbing a gene, we wanna know how that affects the cell's function or its phenotype. As so we could measure a variety of different things, including cell shape, size, how it progresses through mitosis, responds to stimuli, or any other thing that we're interested in. When we're studying a process and want to know what genes are involved, we often will do a large screen where we perturb many different genes and see which ones um, affect the process that we're studying. Traditionally, this is done using arrayed screening, where we use multi-well plates like the ones shown here, where each of these little pink circles represents one well where a population of cells is growing and one gene in each of these individual wells is perturbed. This is nice because you know which cells had which perturbation, which, how, how each cell was, was disrupted. Um, you can make all kinds of different measurements, including using microscopy, measuring gene expression changes, etc. The downside for RAID screening is that it's difficult to scale and often requires laboratory automation to test large lists of genes. More recently, biologists have started to use what's called pooled screening. In this case, you have a large population of cells when each cell has a different gene perturbed. In this way, you can test thousands of genes in a single sample or a single pool of cells. However, traditionally, these sorts of pooled screens are limited to growth phenotypes. Here I'm showing a brief overview of a traditional uh, pipeline of pooled cell screening. In this case, the phenotypes that you can measure have to be linked to how fast cells grow in this specific condition. In addition, the measurements that you're making are only averages across um, populations of cells. On the bottom, I'm showing a new technique we've developed in the Blaney lab where I work. In this case, the cell phenotypes are measured using microscopy and after measuring the cell phenotypes, we uh, use a process called in-situ sequencing, where we sequence in place in each cell a DNA barcode that tells us which gene was perturbed in each individual cell. The advantages for this approach is that one, you can uh, measure a wide range of different phenotypes, not just growth phenotypes. And also you get single cell information so you know how each individual cell um, responded to the perturbation. Here I'm showing an image out of one out of a thousand, thousands of images from an optical pooled screening experiment I recently did. Uh, here in magenta, I've shown the nucleus of each cell and green is a stain for tubulin, which is a structural protein involved in mitosis. So what we can do when we have lots of these images of individual cells, we can identify cells with phenotypes of interest. Here I'm highlighting four cells that happen to be in mitosis when I fix them of varying uh, structures some more normal, like in the bottom left, and some much more perturbed. However, we don't know from this image what gene was perturbed and why that causes a cell to not um, progress through mitosis normally. This is where the in-situ sequencing data comes in. So in this image, each of these individual colored dots represents one read of the in-situ sequencing data. And the color of the dot tells us which DNA uh, base was in that position for the DNA barcode. And if we iterate through multiple cycles of sequencing, we can build up uh, a short DNA barcode sequence that can then tell us, based on our experiment design, what gene was perturbed in each of these individual cells. Here I'm showing a split view. On the left is the phenotype information, so the, the DNA and the tubulin stains. 
On the right is the in-situ sequencing information for the same set of cells, showing us which gene was perturbed in each of these individual cells. This is the image that's hung in the coat gallery, except for not, without, not with the animations. With that, I'd like to thank uh, the Boigny Lab where I work, and especially my advisor, Paul, and then uh, in addition, Avatar, David, and Becca, who originally developed the optical pooled screening approach. And this mitosis project in particular has been a close collaboration with Ian Cheeseman and Quan Chung Su uh, in, in their lab at the Whitehead Institute.